the world's largest volcano, the geoscientists were wrong about. An unexpected discovery just changed the ranking of Earth's biggest volcano. This is on Jolji Inn. So congratulations Mauna Loa on the island of Hawaii. You are once more the biggest shield volcano on the planet without even having done anything. New research suggests the previous record holder Tabu Massif in the Northwest Pacific Ocean should be disqualified on a technicality. The discovery of Tamu Massif, the gigantic volcano which is located about a thousand miles east of Japan, made big news back in 2013. That's when researchers reported it was the largest single volcano documented on Earth. It was roughly the size of New Mexico. But new findings reported in Nature Geoscience concluded that it is a different breed of volcanic mountain than earlier thought, throwing into doubt the prior claim that it is the world's largest single volcano. The study analyzed magnetic field data over Temu Massif, finding that magnetic anomalies, perturbations to the field caused by magnetic rocks in the Earth's crust, resemble those formed at mid-ocean ridge plate boundaries. William Sager, the geophysicist at the University of Houston and senior author for the paper, said the discovery led researchers to conclude that Tamu Massif formed by mid-ocean ridge spreading, quote-unquote, the geologist's term for creating creation of ocean crust at mid-ocean ridge plate boundaries, rather than as a shield volcano, as previously thought. Shield volcanoes are formed primarily as stacks of fluid lava flows and are one of the most common types of volcano. The international group of researchers from Texas, China, and Japan sought to understand how the massive Temu Massif volcano formed near the nexus of free spreading ridges. The key, they report, is the magnetic anomalies. Mid-ocean ridges, plate boundaries where oceanic plates move apart, are themselves, of course, large volcanoes. And these ridges record distinctive linear magnetic anomalies parallel to the ridge as they form new crust. This is a result of lava flows and magma being concentrated near the ridge axis where the magnetic min minerals in the new crust record reversals of the magnetic field polarity. A new understanding of Tamu Massif, the linear magnetic anomalies formed by the three ridges had previously been found around Tamu Massif but it was not clear where they stopped within the volcano. The paper published in 2013 by Sager and his colleagues concluded that Tamu Massif is an enormous shield volcano formed by far-reaching lava flows emanating from its summit. The latest study compiled a magnetic anomaly map over Tamu Massif using 4.6 million magnetic field readings collecting, collected over 54 years along 72,000 kilometers of ship tracks. The data set was anchored by a new grid of magnetic profiles positioned with modern GPS navigation collected by the study authors using Schmidt Ocean Institute Ship Falcor. The resulting map shows that linear magnetic anomalies around Tamu Massif blend into linear anomalies over the mountain itself implying that the underwater volcano formed by extraordinary mid-ocean ridge crustal formation. Sager said the founding is important because it demonstrates that Temu Massif and other oceanic plates are formed by a different process than previously thought. A widely accepted model suggests a large blob of magma. It's known, of course, as a magma mantle plume. The mantle plume rises to the mantle and creates a massive volcano when it arrives at the surface. This eruption is thought to be analogous to massive eruptions on land called continental flood basalts, and it creates a vertical succession of lava flows. The ocean ridge spreading hypothesis suggests the age 
progression is instead lateral. New material is always added at the center of the ridge as older material drifts laterally away. An implication is that the gradual slopes of Tamu Massif are not caused by lava flow shape, but instead by a gradual inflation and then deflation of ridge volcanism as the crust becomes thicker and then grows thinner. The new finding also weakens the accepted analogy between eruptions of continental flood basalts and oceanic plateaus because the formation mechanisms are shown to be different, said Sager. Now, it certainly is one of the largest, so. With the discovery, Sager said the Tamu Massif can no longer be considered the world's largest shield volcano. That title reverts to Mauna Loa on the island, the Big Island of Hawaii. Mauna Loa, of course, we know is right next to Kilauea, and uh, they share the same magma chamber. Now, the largest volcano in the world is really the mid-ocean ridge system, which stretches about 65,000 kilometers around the world, like stitches on a baseball, Sager said. This is really a large volcanic system, not a single volcano. Researchers now think Temu Massif formed as a part of that mid-ocean ridge system, he said. Temu Massif is certainly one of the largest volcanic mountains in the world. The 2013 paper was based on what researchers knew at the time, Sager said. Science is a process and is always changing. There were aspects of that explanation that bugged me too, so I proposed a new cruise and went back to collect the new magnetic data set that led to this new result. In science, we always have to question what we think we know and to check and double check our assumptions. And in the end, it's about getting as close to the truth as possible, no matter where that leads. This above story is based on uh, materials provided by University of Houston, and I'll leave links below for you for this. Now, looking at the recent earthquakes of the Big Island Mauna Loa, the Mauna Loa volcano, we just had a, uh, after the 2.5 magnitude that we had yesterday, we had another one on Mauna Loa just now of 2.7 at a 26.5 kilometer depth. And as we know, that is in an area, as we can see here, pretty close to the magma plume, where we have the magma charging into the magma chamber. It's not close to the surface, it's pretty low down. And we've seen a number of earthquakes in Mauna Loa and Kilauea as well that were recently very deep. This is not what the usual earthquakes are. They're usually very shallow, uh, below 10 kilometers, some of them are, for, for example, 0 0.3 kilometers, very shallow, 1.5 kilometer depths, things like that. That's what we had, for example, two days ago, 2.6 magnitude, 1.5. Also, we remember that on August 18th, the USGS changed the color code from Mauna Loa to yellow because it's considering it a high threat volcano and they're keeping their monitors on it because of the fact that it can be erupting soon. It is deflating. It's not caused by water from rain. It's not caused by malfunction of instruments. It's the same thing uh, having to do with Kilauea. It is deforming in that it is inflating, just like Mauna Loa is, meaning that they're the magma chamber, as we know, which is shared between them, and with Loiki Seamount, south of Kilauea and Mauna Loa, they share the same magma chamber, and that is filling with recharging and filling with magma. So we could see, I don't know, I'm not a geologist, but we could see uh, perhaps an eruption by the end of the summer. We'll have to see. I'll leave links below for you for this.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.